so uh, again this is like <clears throat> a foundation course um, it's a very important for many many courses so if you need to do uh, network security uh, you have to know the TCP IP very well you have to understand the OSI reference model very well OSI reference model will be with you the rest of your life if you are in this field if you are in the field of computer science cybersecurity computer engineering <clears throat> it will be with you the rest of your life so it's a very important concept that that you have to to really know uh, uh, very well all right um, then we move to TCP IP and to be honest with you this is the first time I teach only TCP IP uh, I used to teach much more foundational uh, textbook it goes into um, uh, even the protocols uh, the theory of the protocols used etc etc this is more like uh, more hands-on that's what you'll see in real life all right so uh, it just touch uh, the foundation and moves on tell you what you need to to use in your life all right so let me try this semester I think it will be much more useful for many of the students and it will make it much more fun course for many of you because it's it's something that you will work with uh, actually you work with it every day right and when you move on it will be uh, something that that you you'll uh, you will need to work with more and more all right all right so let's have a little bit review let me go forward and and um, you know what we covered last week I will not start from the easy things but we'll come to here and in here we cover the OSI reference model okay um, so how many layers we have seven layers usually we count them from bottom to bottom to uh, to the upper one so we start with the physical physical will provide surface for the data link layer data link layer will provide a surface to the network layer and the network layer will provide surface to the transport layer, to the session layer, to the presentation, and then to the application. All right. Usually, hardware network engineers deal with the physical layer, maybe data link layer too. Network engineers, infrastructure engineers, they deal with the network and the transport layer. Programmers who prepare the applications deal with the application level. And each one of these levels, you will have different protocols. All right. So, for example, uh, in network layer, we have two famous uh, protocols, like the IP version 4 and IP version 6. We have also the ICMP and other protocols, right? When you go to the transport layer, we, you heard about TCP protocol and UDP protocol. Maybe other protocols also in here. When you go in the application layer, okay, there is many protocols there. All of you heard about HTTP, uh, HTTPS. You heard about Telnet, FTP, symbol mail protocol, okay. Uh, management of protocols so on and so forth all right so the data will start encapsulating up to bottom and the packet as it goes down from the application to the physical layer it will be bigger why it becomes bigger because for every layer we're going to add a header yeah. okay this header is useful to arrange a communication all right Think about it like a light, writing a letter to your friend, to your wife, to your husband, to your child, to whoever, all right? You're going to write it in a piece of paper. That's the message in the application. But how you send it? You have to keep it inside envelope, all right? The envelope will have the address, source address and destination address. That's exactly what we are doing here. So we are encapsulating our data with the headers as we go down, uh, all the way down until it goes to the destination. We agreed on that last time, 
there was no disagreement. Uh, we thought it's uh, the way it should work. <clears throat> so this will give you like a, a general picture how it will happen. So as we agreed last time, there is two types of interfaces of communication. Communication, one more time, we agreed. What is communication? Is the exchange of data. Exchange of data, right? And then we discuss what is data. It could be digital, it could be analog, right? All right, so there is two types of communication and you have to keep it in your mind and you have to understand it very well and you have to comprehend it uh, perfectly you have to have a, a perfect comprehension for how things how we do business here all right so you have a very simple network in here above as you see it in here so we have device a uh, and device b they are interconnected Okay, this device A could be some city in China. This device B could be some city in Pakistan, for example. All right, so they are remote. All right, they are remote from each other. So there is no way that we're going to run a wire all the way from device E to device B. You agree? All right, so it could be, um, you know, um, you know, um, um, uh, wireless. It could be wireless. It could be satellite out of my topic right now okay just for know yes sir like i said it could be through optical fiber right? it could be optical fiber it could be anything <clears throat> all right so ultimately the data gonna go from device a to device b all right and they're gonna go in through intermediate nodes let's not talk about them right now these are switches switches and routers until it goes to the destination all right so the data normal data it will go from device e to it will the the, the message will be formulated using the application layer it's gonna go with the interface between layer seven and six to the presentation and then it's gonna go to the session then it will go to the transport layer and the transport layer it will be either tcp or udp or stp all right mostly it's tcp most of the communication so it's gonna go through a port all right then gonna go to a network layer where you have the ip address the destination ip address this ip address we call it the logical address each node has physical address and has a logical address assigned to the device then it goes to the data link layer we call it the frame here then bits will be put on the wire how they are put in the wire the bits will be converted into signal either electrical signal or light through the fiber all right it somehow they will be the word the technical word we call it where they will be encoded into a signal the signal or the the data will be transmitted through this medium okay and remember it's a medium we spoke about the medium last time let me pause a bit here the medium could be if we divide the whole world of media in two so we have guided or wired and guided or wireless all right Though guided, it could be like a twisted pair, it could be a coax cable, it could be a fiber. The wireless could be a satellite communication, it could be RF communication like Wi-Fi, it could be also light, like, like what? Infrared, right? And so on and so forth. All right, so it's going to go to these nodes, which is usually routers. Okay, the router has only three layers, does not have application or transport layer. So the data will go to the physical layer, all right? And remember what we said about the router. Can, can somebody remind me how we described a router? Translate.
yeah it's, it's we call it the scientific name we call it multi homed multi homed uh, node that means to have it has two network cards so the host in here has one network card this network card is in the same logical network with the first network card in here so they could talk to each other then the data going to go through the physical layer through this network card it's going to go to the data link it's going to go to the network network why it has to go up why it does not go through Uh, so the IP address exactly so it's it's because, the traffic. because you need to know what is the next hop so it's gonna go all the way because we remove the header and we remove another header and then it goes up we remove another he header then we write the pack we write the packet again okay we write the packet again okay it will be right again all right then it goes down to the data link to the physical layer and then it goes to the next intermediate node, which is another router. The same thing will happen. It's going to go to the physical, remove the header. It go to upper layer here. It will remove the data link header. It goes to the network. Okay. And now with open the header, what it's going to read? The IP address. Then it builds, it builds a packet again and sends it down. All right. So when it goes down, it will add a header in here. It will add a different header in here. And then it goes to where? To the destination. Then the frame goes to where? To the data link layer. What does the data link layer do? Read the header, throw it. Then it know what does it do. Then it's going to go to the network layer. What does it do? Open the header, read the instructions, throw the header, and go back to the transport. The transport does the same thing, all right? So what is a transport interested in? The port. Oh. So is it port 80? Then it's HTTP application. If it's port 22, then it's SSH application. If it's port 23, then it's, you know, 10 net application. So, and then it sends it all the way to the application. The application will be able to read the message. So this path, like this, down up down up down up this is the real path the real path okay for the packet how it goes so this is like the real path of the data all right at the same time each layer took with each layer they communicate each with each other using the headers all right so so let's say, let's say that the packet comes to here to the transport now at the transport you will be able to read the header that was written by layer 4 in the sender so now they are communicating they are communicating this is a logical communication it's not a real there is no data goes this way the data goes all the way like this but you know once this open the header they are like talking, all right? Example, example, example. If, for example, uh, you have in here uh, the poll, all right? All right, so I send him a letter, all right? Okay, while, uh, and he received the letter by mail. While he's reading the letter, what he feels like? Feels like he's talking to me directly, right? And that's exactly what's happening. So there is a real transmission and there is a logical transmission in here between the layers. All right. So if you were asked in the exam or anywhere, what is the difference between the physical communication and the logical communication? That's exactly it. That's exactly it. Any questions so far? All right. So that's exactly what will happen in the OSI model. Okay, you have the data in layer 7, you're going to add a header. It goes to the next layer, another header, H6, H5, H4, H3, H2. Then they go into the wire in the physical layer like bits, zeros and one. They will be encoded by the network card into a signal. The signal will go through the transmission medium. The transmission medium will send the, si the signal to to the network card of the other device 
the other device or the, rece the receiving device will convert the signal into bits again. All right. Then it will read the H1, delete it, and then it bring everything above to layer 2. Layer 2 will do the same thing. We'll read the header 2, delete it, and then know what to do. It's like a map. And then it goes to all the way up until it gets to the destination. Very simple, very elegant. It can't be neater than this. You agree? All right. So we, we spoke about like, you know, uh, how data moves. Okay, so these are the functions of each layer in short. This is in short. In physical layer that it transmit bits over the medium, it provides mechanical and electrical specifications. So what is the level of the signals? Is it to plus five volt, or plus minus 3.3 .3 volts? How the encoding is happening? All of this is in the physical layer. And, and, you know, to cover all the technologies in the physical layer, you need like uh, maybe like 200 hours to, to go over it or 300 hours. It's a whole world of science that you need to learn. Anyways, you go to the data link. This will organize the bits into frames. Remember, we call them frames in this level to provide hope to hope uh, delivery. Remember, in the data link layer, we use the physical address and only sees the neighbor only sees the neighbor it does not see anything further right then it goes to the network layer and this will move the packets and remember we call it packets from source to the destination source could be in india destination could be in new zealand no problem all right so source and destination ip address will be there and then the transport layer which provides reliable process to process so Again, here, host-to-host -host communication, here, process in this host to a process in that host, okay, uh, 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 and process-to-process -process message delivery, and also handles the error recovery. Then we go to the session layer is like to manage and terminate the sessions. So we have multiple sessions. Then the presentation will translate, encrypt, and compress the data. So in here, for example, usually to speed up the process, to speed up the transmission, you compress the data. Okay, so both sides need to agree what compression algorithms are used. If you compress with algorithm A, then you have to dec decompress with algorithm A, the same algorithm. Otherwise, you miss the data. All right, and then it goes. Uh, then you have the 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 um, the the, the Application layer, okay, will it give access to the network? From here, we will start getting access to the network, right? So, uh, when you take a look at the TCP IP protocol, which we call the de facto protocol, if you don't have TCP IP, maybe it's maybe the TCP IP is not the most secure network, it must be not the most reliable network, it must be not the most fast network, it might be, you know, all of this. All right, doesn't matter because it's a de facto, it's a de facto uh, protocol. If you don't have TCP IP, you don't have internet. All right, so you could have much robust protocol designed before or will be designed later. Okay, does it make any difference? I mean, if you have the fastest, the best protocol in your computer, and you don't have TCP IP, you will not be able to browse internet, you're not to be able to read your emails, you're not to be able to do many things. So it's a de facto protocol. That's it, finito. We, we can't change the whole world, right? So <clears throat> the way it, it's layered, there's five layers, the physical, the data link, the network, the transport, the application, all right? And usually, like the original, when it came up, they have different names for it. So you have the hardware, you have the network interface instead, of data link, we have internet instead of network, uh, transport, same as transport and application. So let's use this. It's nowadays mostly they use physical data link, transport, and application. All right. But if you hear about network interface, that means it's data link. Okay. You have to know this. Internet in all books, all of this, you don't see this. You'll see internet, which is the network, right? Uh, to help you memorize it, okay, internet is a network. So, okay, network interface is a data link. It's below the network because that's what where you have the 
internet first. This is another like you know if you need to okay connect them together. So up to here the same. So you have the physical physical trial network network application in in TCP IP includes the three here application presentation and session. Remember that what we said that there is many different protocols run in each layer. Okay, so for example, for example, uh, in, t in transport layer we have TCP and we have UDP. In here you will have the IP SNMP. Okay, and in here there is LAN and WAN technology, different technologies. So um, uh, this is the real way of connecting devices. As you see, I mean, usually it's very hard to have a node connected directly with a node, right? I mean, right now I'm connected with you. Um, I live in uh, Trumbull, Connecticut. Uh, maybe like Cedo um, uh, live in where Bridgeport, Connecticut, or maybe in uh, uh, Vienna. I have no idea where he lives. Okay. But I know where I live in Trumbull, Connecticut. So, so, all right. So, you know, the, we are connected maybe between me and him, like 20, uh, it cannot be 20 routers, 10 routers, 7 routers. All right. But you have links connected to router. And you see in here is enter switch network. So the packet, the data, remember, the message will be divided into small chunks. We call them packets. All right. <coughs> and it's not necessary that the data will go okay so packet one go through link two packet three could go through link three packet four again through link three could have different route does it make a difference because all of them will be received by the destination and the destination will do its magic will put the puzzle together all right We'll put the puzzle together. All right, so in here, as you see here, the physical layer and the physical layer in here, okay? So the connection between two nodes is, we call link, multiple links to the destination, and and that's how, the, that's what explain the data could have different paths. All right, so what is the unit of communication? All right, in here. Um, so as you see in here, in the physical layer, it's going to go from link to link until the destination. So it's going to go from zeros and ones from place to place and, to, and, and from, you know, from node to node until it gets to the destination. So on the physical layer, only we see the unit is zeros and ones. All right. I know we covered that last time, but I want to make sure you got this concept very well. So that's why I'm going it over it again quickly. Uh, because if you miss them sort of the concepts, that's a problem. Then you go in and in, um, um, in into the data link layer. In the data link layer, we have we have uh, uh, the frames. All right. So the frame will be moving from host to host. All right. Host uh, to host. And then we'll go to um, the uh, network layer where we have the data gram. We call it data gram. And the data gram, look in here, just just visualize this. This arrow makes it, it's completely different than this, all right? So what does this mean? What does it mean? That means the source address in here is A, the destination address is R1. And the, the next frame, the source address is router 1, and the destination is router 3. Move on. The source address here is R3, and the destination is R4. So it goes host to host. Remember this. And the second layer is host to host. Again, host to host. What does this mean in a different way? The source needs to know the physical address of the destination. So we have the source address of A and the destination address of R1. Clear, host to host. All right. One more last time, host to host. Let's go further here. In here, in the datagram, it's it's what. Uh, um, um, uh, it will be communicating from source to destination. 
So you see the communication is one arrow going to go like this all the way there. So what is the source address in here? Joel, what's the source address? What's the source address? Is it A? A. What is the destination address? Um, B. B. That's it. So here the source address, if you look in here, so this is in here all the way. It has one source address, logical address, which is the IP address of A. And it has one logical address of the destination, which is B. Let me go back in here. In here, no. In here, for every one of these, it will have different source and different destination address. Okay, each one of these will have different source and destination address. And it's very important to understand this very well. Moving on, okay, so the unit of communication at the transport layer is segment, user datagram, or packet. Call it mostly I call it packet myself. In here is datagram, in here we call it packet. I mean some books call it segments, you know, whatever. So you have to know the three names. All right. So the same thing in here. What is the address? Quick question, Professor. Okay. You said it's packet and segment. What's the third one? It's a packet, a segment, or datagram, or, or user datagram. All right, perfect. So three names, segment, user datagram. Actually, first time I hear this term, user datagram. All right, but in this book they say it, and packet. I heard segment, but mostly it's packet. Okay, I call it packet myself. All right. I like to call it packet. Okay. So in here, take a look in here. You have the source. I'm going to go all the way to the network layer. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. So in here, in the, uh, in, uh, okay, in here, it's, uh, this is the application. Oh, let me go back. I'm sorry. Oh, my. Okay. In here, in the transport layer, so in the transport layer, what we have, what is the address we'll look at? Anybody knows? Nope. Nobody knows? Source of destination. What is the source? What is the destination in the transport layer? Uh, source is D4. The, the, the port, yes, yes. So port, source port, and destination port. That's correct. Okay, the source port and the destination port. Then in the application, so the unit of communication and the transport layer is a segment. We read that. Then we have to the application layer where we have the message. All right, the message. All right, and again, it's source to destination from source to destination, application to application. Okay, so, uh, you know, usually if you are sending like uh, HTTP, you read it in the browser anyways, all right? So the unit of communication is a message, clear? Then we spoke about addressing. There is a three levels of addressing. There is a physical address and the data link layer. Okay, so what, what other name for the physical address? Physical address, that's one name. What is the other name? MAC address. MAC, MAC address. Which is, what's the third yes. name? Badder. What's the third name? For the physical address? Yes. We have the MAC address and we have the physical address. And I'm not sure, Professor. Hardware address, sometimes they call it oh. hardware address, three, right? Okay, three. Mm -hmm. All right, so th those are not putting their videos, I'm going to keep asking them. So I want to make sure they're awake. <laughs> All right, then we'll go to the logic address. Uh, what? Professor, actually, uh, I faced some problem with my camera. I don't know, actually. I turned it on, but it's black. Yeah, you are beautiful with the black, by the way. Don't worry about it. I was joking. So. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, so don't worry. Um, I, I just pick names randomly, so, uh, all right. And the reason for that, I need it to be an interactive class. Um, otherwise, it becomes boring. 
All right, then we have the network layer. Okay, the network layer. What is the address we have in the network layer? The logical IP address. IP address. IP. IP address. So IP address could be two versions of IP address. We have version four and version six. All right. Six. All right. Yeah. Then we go to the transport layer. We'll have the port. All right, the port address. And then, uh, then we have the application layer where we have the application specific address. Right. Now. Yes. Let me ask you a question. Let me pick some people. Oh, Ryan. Ryan is there. I did not know you were taking my class this semester. So, Ryan, what is the size of the port? How many bits? Uh, 16 bits. How about the uh, IP4? Uh, 32. How about IP6? 128. How about the physical address? Uh, 48. 48 bits. Okay, you could put your camera off. You're great. <laughs> a great job all right so that's what okay so you know um once you work physically in this business you'll know that i mean i mean if it's not like first time but you know that right uh all right so uh and again in here last time we explained how the physic how the data is transmitted so remember remember that what we said in the physical layer that every it's 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 hop to hop hop to hop Okay, hop to hop. So the source address and destination address keep changing from hop to hop until you get to. So that's the destination address, and that's the source address. That's the data. So the source, the destination address in here, eighty-seven. Gonna go to eighty-seven, and the source address is is ten. Because they are connected right away in the same hop. There's no problem. All right. All right. And, you know, it will do it usually in the hop you'll have um, uh, because of the address. When the packet goes to here, so what will happen? What does the hop do in here? It will broadcast it. So it will send it to here. It will send it to here. It will send it to here. So node 28 will receive it, but the destination 87. So what will do? Will not take it. Sorry, it's not my IP address. I will not take it. Then it go to here. Oh, to the 53, the destination address 87, sorry, I will not take it. Then it goes to here, oh, source address 87, my address is 87. This is my frame. I'll take it. I'll take it, all right? So this is like how we write, how we write the, uh, the MAC address. It's like 48-bit, uh, uh, it's 6 byte. 6 byte, 6 times 8, 48 bit. It's written in a 20, a 20, um, a tw a 12, uh, and 12 hexadecimal digits. So, uh, so 12, okay, this is 12 times 4, how much? 12 times 8, how much? 48 bits, all right. So, 4, four bits plus 4, 8. 8 plus 8 plus 8 plus 8 it will be 20 and it's usually written with with um, with column all right so half of it this side it will reflect the company and this will reflect the serial in the company all right so each mac address each ethernet card in the world is unique you cannot have two ethernet net, network have the same mac address uh, they are Unique, and if you go to your computer in here, for example, if you need to check what is your uh, MAC address, okay, what you, what's your MAC address? Or you have to say IP config, all right, okay. So in here, all right, um, okay, I have IP six in here, so this is the IP address in here. Okay, uh, let me see, media, okay, this is by the way the IP6 address, that long one, this is the IP4 address, this is the subnet mask, alright, so we'll go, oh, oh, I have to say slash all, okay, let me do a slash all, okay. Quick question, Professor. Okay. So how do they go about masking the IP address? You know, like, for example, when you're downloading something from, like, an unknown source, like, say, a torrent or something, uh -huh. how do they go about masking it? So it, it shows that you're in, like, a different location. Like, what's the science behind the VPN? Or 
All right, so you're asking me about VPN, and to explain the VPN for you, I need like two lectures. So why don't you wait a couple of lectures? I'll explain for you what's VPN. Um, so VPN is a cre creating a tunnel, all right? And this tunnel will be encrypted. It will be encrypted. So the data will be inside the data, will be encrypted, all right? And they don't mask the IP address, I mean, uh, uh, you you bring the the network to the same network, so it's kind of you give the endpoint an IP address from the network of the source address. They look as if they are part of the same network. So here, what I'm talking about the physical IP address, as you see in here, this is the Ethernet card of this device. All right. Uh, so usually it's written by a hyphen, a hyphen or a column, all right? So in here, this is the physical address, and this must be unique, all right? Now, this, uh, it's engraved, it's an engraved on your uh, hard disk, uh, I'm sorry, on your uh, network card, all right? It's burned there, all right? But there's always ways that you could, software that you could like overwrite it for attacks, for, uh, um, um, for attacks. All right, all right, all right. So that's in here, uh, the physical IP address. All right, all right. So again, it's 48 bits. It's written this way. It's written in the hexadecimal, okay, in the hexadecimal format, okay. Uh, and it's a very important to know. It's written in a hexadecimal format, okay. It's a very important. Okay, why? Because IP4. It's written in what format? Anybody knows? Joel? The de decimal dot notation? Decimal, that's correct, Joel. Although Joel did not answer, but it's decimal. All right. How about IP6? How is it written? It's for you, Joel, this time. IP6 is written decimal or hexadecimal? There is no IP6 in here. Uh, but I'm asking, like. I would say hexadecimal. I'm not quite sure. Okay, so you're guessing. You are guessing now, right? And you're guessing. Right, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. No, your guess is right. So IP six is written in in hexadecimal. IP four written in decimal. The uh, the ether, the physical address is written in hexadecimal. All right. So so just remember these uh, things. Okay. What else we covered last time? Again, in here, okay, so let's take a look in here. So how is the logical address work? Remember, in the logical address, the communication will be will be source to the destination, all right? So where is the logical address in here? A and B, the same, A and B. Oh, so this IP address, this A is a source IP address, P is a destination IP address. So AP, 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 AP till the end. Logical address stays at it. What changes? The physical address. So, so in here, the the source is 2010. Okay, and in here 2010. Then now it changed 33 to 99, 33 to 99. Then in the other link changed from 9566 to 9566. So physical address changes from from hop to hop, hop to hop or hop to hop. Yes, right. All right. But you know, sender to receiver, it will stay in the logical address. It's a very important concept, especially if you go in the future in, uh, in, in Cisco and all of that. And um, it's a very important thing. Okay. So okay, so uh, we already covered that. Okay, so in here, um, in here, so uh, port numbers, port numbers. So it depends on the application. If you are using HTTP, for example, it will use uh, you know uh, certain ports. So as you see in here, okay, when you go back in here, this is source port, destination port, source port, then destination logical address, source logical address. And then we add in here, in this layer, we're going to add the physical address. All right, so three levels of addressing that you you have to understand very well. All right, so the source is A, that's why you put A. Destination, destination is J, that's why we have J. So it goes all the way 
And in the destination, you have multiple applications, multiple ports. It has to go through the right port. All right. Very elegant system. Works very well. All right. Been tested for 30 or 40 years now. Okay. Since the ARPANET, everything is growing. All right. All right. So, uh, okay. So that's what we covered last time. Any questions? I, I meant to repeat it for those who came in newly today. But anything that you don't understand, you want me to go over again? Nope. Good. Great. So we are friends still. That's great. All right. So, okay. What we need to cover today is actually, okay, uh, um, we're going to move on in here. Okay. So in here. And we'll go, we'll move on. To take a look under underlying uh, technology, right? So, so we'll 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 go today uh, today over the wired local area network, wireless lands quickly, point to point, one switched ones, uh, connected devices, uh, and we'll try to go over that as much as we could. Okay, so everybody understand what's LAN, right? Local area network. Okay, where we connect like uh, um, uh, computers or end nodes. Or endpoints, we sometimes you call them hosts, sometimes you call them end nodes, many times you call them endpoints. All right, so you know, uh, we connect them together um, through a local area um, uh, uh, land, which is a limited geographic area inside the building, inside the campus. They will be interconnected, and usually the land it will be connected through a one to another land. And another ones, and that will build um, built for you the internet, right? So the land market has been several technologies. Everybody heard about Ethernet because it's a very, very, very common, but it's not the only technology. Usually, when we buy a when we buy a, a network card, what we call it? Okay, Ethernet card, right? That's how we call it, Ethernet card. But that's a wrong name, all right? Because Ethernet is just a technology, one of the technologies, right? It's exactly when you when you buy uh, uh, when you when somebody asks you to give him, give him a give him a tissue. So what they what they say, what they say? Give him Kleenex. Kleenex is one brand of tissues. All right. Okay? Or somebody tell me give me Xerox. Xerox is one brand. All right. So because it was the fairest or the most common. It become become like you know a, a, you know very common name. Ethernet is just name of one technology among others. All right, but because it's mostly used, especially in our computers at home, we call it give me Ethernet card. It's a network card. All right, but the network card the card could be Ethernet. It could be token ring. All right, so connected the computers in a ring. A ring, token bus. Okay. It's in a bus, but there is a token exchange in FDDI, which is like a fiber, okay? And ATM LAN, all right? ATM is different than automatic teller machine, okay? Something different. And um, uh, But as, as I told you, Ethernet is the dominant technology. That's why we say Ethernet card. It's not Ethernet card. It's a, it's a network card for Ethernet technology, all right? So... Um, We'll go over IEEE standards quickly, frame format. Okay, frame in what level we have it? Which layer? Two. Two. All right, then yeah. we're, we're going to go at about, we'll talk about addressing. Then we'll talk about Ethernet evolution, standard Ethernet, fast Ethernet, gigabit Ethernet, 10 gigabit Ethernet. So these are, uh, again, very important concepts to know. So the IEEE standards for LANs. All right, so, um, uh, uh, so you have a transmission medium, okay, as you see in the bottom, and here, that's in the OSI or TCB reference mo model. On top of it, that you're going to have a physical layer. All right, so in in the Ethernet, we call it Ethernet physical layer, or token ring physical layer, or token bus physical layer, or FDDI physical layer. There is multiple technologies. So in the physical layer, okay, there is multiple technologies. All right, so let's say the physical layer is, is, is a car. 
Okay, there is different technologies in the cars, right? There is diesel cars. There is gas ga cars. There is electric cars, right? Different cars, right? So car is a general name, and there is different types of cars. Physical layer, it could be any on any of those and more, all right? In top of that, in top of the physical layer, that we're going to have data link layer, data link layer. All right. So the data link layer for each of these technologies work differently. They are different. So there is an Ethernet Mac for the Ethernet. There is Token Ring Mac for the Token Ring. There is Token Bus, okay, Mac for the Token Bus, so on and so forth. So very important to understand this. This is abstraction. This is generalization. This is technology. Okay, this is technology. This is like the engine you built, a, a car engine you built in your course. It's a very theoretical engine, right? But this is like a real engine on cars. Okay, so they are different. There is a lot of details that could be different. Clear? All right, and because, and that's the beauty. Why are we mentioning that? Why we are mentioning that? Because. Because we were talking about the standard, there is a standard, okay? There is OSI standard, right? And why we needed the standard from the very beginning? Because everybody needs to build their technology according to the standard. According to the standard does not mean they are the same, they are different, right? You drive Mercedes, okay? I drive uh, Tesla, okay? The people who designed Mercedes-Benz followed the standard of cars. The people who designed Tesla followed the standard of Tesla. Both cars could run in the same highway, right? They could be driven by anybody. If you have a Connecticut driver's license, you will be able to drive both of them. Why? Because Tesla and BMW, uh, Toyota, all of these follow the same standard. The same thing in here. Are we able to have a communication between Ethernet and token ring and token bus and FDDI? Are we? The answer is yes. Why? Because they follow the OSI standard. Are they the same? They are not the same. No. Okay. They follow the same standard, but they are not the same. Yeah. There is differences, but they are okay. They are, but they. They, we are able to connect them together because they follow the standard. That's the whole idea of having a standard. Okay, you'll be able to have different technologies, but these technologies will be able to communicate. They will be able to be in the same network. All right. So in here you have the LL logical link control. The 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 the. Uh, the, the Mac in, in here you'll have you'll have the Mac so the DLL the D data link layer you'll have the Mac and on top of that you'll have the LLC the logical link control so data link layer as we'll see later divided in two levels all right what are the two levels Mac what is Mac media access control what is media access control how how this layer could access the media. This is the media. How it will could access the media. What is the protocol to access the media? That's why we call it media access control. All right? Media access control. All right? In top of that, we'll have the LLC and all of them the same. All right? For all apply for the same. Clear the point in here. Again, it's a very important concept. You have to understand it very well okay for the design okay all right so let's take a look at the ethernet frame where is the ethernet frame is it here or here here right the ethernet frame yeah. okay yeah. okay the ethernet frame how it look like all right so if you take a look at the ethernet frame it will start with a preamble preamble which is 64 bits of Alternating ones and zero, one zero, one zero, one zero. How many? Fifty-six bits. Why we need that? For synchronization. 
okay, to synchronize things, for synchronization, all right? We need them for synchronization, all right? And that's what we call it the preamble. We call it preamble. All right, so then after that, we'll have the start frame delimiter, okay? It's a flag. It's one byte. And it's one zero one zero one zero one one fixed. All right. Why we need it? We need it to separate the preamble from the rest of the frame. From the rest of the frame. All right. It's by design. That's how it's designed. We have to pick numbers. That's how it is exactly uh, designed. Okay. Then after that, what we're gonna have? The destination address the physical destination address give me example for the destination address ethernet address what is the size of the ethernet address 48 bits which is like six bytes right then we have the source address same thing 48 bits then we have length it could have two different type and different things in here it could have the length okay Okay, or the type, length or the type, okay? So type field or, or, or the, the original, the original um, uh, Ethernet used this field as the type field. It used to be like a type field to define the upper layer protocol. What is the protocol on top of it? Okay, uh, okay, in, in this field. Then after that, it, um, uh, and in, in you know, later it used to define the number of bytes in the data field. So the data field in here, what is the length of the data field? So length, what's the length of the bank in here? So what is the data in here? Your data coming from the upper layer, right? Okay, why we need the padding? Because this data has to have a minimal size. If the data is shorter than the minimal, so we'll add a padding bits to it. All right. Then we go to the CRC. Okay. So the question is um, the data. Okay. Um, what is the minimal or well, minimal size should be? 46. Okay. And the max 46 bytes and the maximum 1500 bytes. All right. So what is the minimum again? 46 bytes. What is the maximum? 1500 bytes. So let's say that you have 40 bytes only. What you have to do? You have to do padding. Padding. You have to do padding. Adding like uh, six bytes more. All right. All right. So that's what. Then we have the CRC. Which is uh, which is like usually a CRC thirty two bytes, and this is for error detection, a mechanism called cyclic redundancy check. This will be calculated from the data in here. There is a mathematical operation it will be calculated. It will be added in here, and when this frame goes to the destination, it will be recalculated again. So if it's the same value, that means the packet is perfect. There is no change. If they are different, that means there is a corruption in the data. So CRC is used for checking. So let's repeat it quickly what we said. CRC, which is CRC, which is a cyclic redundancy check, it used to check the integrity of the frame. Then data, data you put your data in here. This data has to be forty-six bytes minimum, minimum and maximum fifteen hundred. If it's less than forty-six, we have to add a padding. All right, and there is a reason for that. Let's not get into that. Then the length is the length of the uh, the data in here. How many bytes the data in here? Source source MAC address and destination MAC address. You have the SFD, okay, which is this format uh, um, uh, in here, and this is start of the delimiter. Uh, and uh, it, it helps for synchronization. The last two bits are 11 and uh, alter the receiver that the next field is the destination address. So you see 11 or 11 
and then we'll alter the destination that the next field will be the destination. That's the purpose of it. And you have the preamble in here. Okay, it's used for synchronizing um, uh, its input timing, and usually it's 0, 1, 0, 1, 56 times. That's the frame. Where is this frame? Let's go back here. That's the frame, right? The frame at the data link layer, right? Okay, so that's the frame, how it looks like and that for what technology this frame for what technology is it for token boss is it for token boss i need to hear somebody it's for ethernet for ethernet Mac. not ethernet. for okay so the frame you see it in here is ethernet frame it's for this type of frame now, when you go to token ring, it might be different. If you go to the token bus, it might be different. If you go to the FDDI, it might be different. Clear? All right. So remember that you have different technologies. All of them follow the same standard, but they have their own design. Their own design. All right. And the preamble with the SFD, this is the physical layer header. Okay, physical layer header. All right, so we were talking about the maximum and the minimum lengths, maximum and minimum length of the data. So the minimum payload length is 46 bytes, and the maximum payload length is 1500 bytes. If we have less than 46, we have to add padding. All right, the whole frame altogether, the minimum frame length would be 5 to 12 bits or 64 bytes so if you add this with this with this with this with this the minimum will be 64 bytes and the maximum frame length will be 15 18 bytes all right so there is a minimum and there is a maximum at the frame level so remember these numbers minimum length is 64 bytes and the maximum length is 15 18 bytes don't remember the bits enough to remember the bytes all right joel all right okay all right so ethernet address in hexadecimal so my question to you joel let me ask you a question before you send that important text let me send you a question all right so in here you see in here we are saying we are talking about ethernet frame and then we have we here we're talking about the maximum and minimum length in the ethernet frame and then here we are talking about ethernet address in hexadecimal notation all right all right but in here we have ethernet technology we have token rig technology we have token bus technology why why we are talking about ethernet only because that's the technology that's being used the most okay it's like the yeah, the, the, most the most technology common. all right technology exactly all right just this is an example you, can, you, you are not going in this textbook to explain all the technologies. Okay, we are telling you that there is spe uh, some specifications for each one. We're giving an example for the Ethernet. Why Ethernet? Because it's the most used technology, right? It's the most used um, technology. Thank you, Joel. All right, let's take a look at the Ethernet address in the hexadecimal notation in here. All right, so we said it's like 48 bits, 6 bytes, 12 hexadecimal digits, separated by colon or hyphen all right so remember that they are presented by hexadecimal usually hexadecimal all right why we are why we care so much about about you know uh the mac address there is a reason for that because when you send the packet when you send the packet there is a three ways of communication all right, three ways of communication. All right, Afaz, do you know what are the three ways of communication? How you send a Mac a, 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 a packet? How when you send a frame? How you disseminate a frame? How you send it? Afaz, are you there? Let me give you the first one. The first technique is called unicast. 
-hmm. Right? What's unicast? <clears throat> node to node. Node to node. That's a unicast. Uh, right? Unicast. What the other mm -hmm. technique is called? Double cast? Double multicast. 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 Where it node to a group of nodes. All right? And the third one is? Broadcast. Broadcast. So how we know it's a multicast or a unicast or a broadcast is the way that the Ethernet is is uh, uh, the Ethernet address is put in the packet in that frame. Sorry. So in here, if you look at the last byte, so this last byte in here, okay. And if you take a look at the first bit, if it's zero, then it's a unicast. If it's one, it's a multicast. That means if this one in here, the D2, if it's an even number, then it's what? A unicast. If it's an odd number, it's a multicast. Okay. Right? okay. So if it's an odd number, then it's a multicast. So the broadcast destination address is a special case of the multicast address. All ones. If all the bits in here are ones, then it's a broadcast. So we have a unicast, we have a multicast, and we have broadcast. broadcast. All right, broadcast. All right, so let's take example. So the least significant bit of the first byte defines the type of address. If it's uh, if the bit is zero, as we see it in here, then it's a unicast. If it's one, then it's a multicast. So let's do some exercise in here. Define the type of the following destination addresses. You are given three addresses. All right. So um, is this a multi is this a unicast, a multicast, a broadcast? Same question. So let me pick Edwin, Camille. Edwin, Camille, are you there? All right. How about Justin? Edwin, how are you? Good, how are you? Good. Good. Did you hear the question? Uh, uh, can you repeat it? I could, yes. Happily. All right. So this in here, a MAC address, right? How would yes. you know if it's a multicast or a broadcast or a unicast? Let me help you, okay? We said you check the first bit right. in, in the last byte. If it's zero, then it's unicast. If it's one, it's a multicast. So when you go in here, which one of these numbers you have to check? The um, last number. Which? What is the last number? Zero. Where is the zero? I don't see zero in here. Oh, I was paying attention to the time. But it's four and an A, so it would be a. It will be A. Number. You have to check A, right? Remember again, which one we have to check? It's this one, right? The D two in here. So that will be in here A. All right. So A, if you write it as a binary, so let's go in here. If you go to here, and you go here, here, and you write A, okay, and then you convert it to binary. How is it written? Like one zero one zero. So what is the first bit zero? Then it's this is a unicast or multicast. If the first bit is zero, is it unicast or multicast? Unicast. Unicast. Why? Because it says if it's in here, it will be a unicast, yes. right? All right. So all we have to check to this number. <coughs> if it's even, if it's even, then it's what? A unicast. If it's odd, then it's Multicast. Multicast. So A, is it even or odd? A equals to 10, right? Even. 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 So how about here? Odd. Odd. Then it's what? Odd. What is this? It's a multicast. How about when it's multi all ones, it will be? 
broadcast. Broadcast. Yes. broadcast when it's all F F F F F. So in the exam, in your test, when I give you any MAC address, and I'll tell you, is this unicast, multicast, broadcast? You know how to do it. You know how to do it, right? There is no issue yeah. there. Okay, you got it. All right. So show how the address, this address, this is a MAC address, is sent out online. Okay, so the way it's sent out on the line, the address is sent left to the right. That means, okay, this one, for, this will be sent first, then this will be sent, okay, so in here, the 46, 47 is in here, and this in here, the 20 in here, and then the 1B in here, and so on and so forth. So left to right. However, pay attention to this. Each byte will be sent right to left. Right to left. So 47, the 47, okay, let's convert 47. Okay, copy this. And let's go in here. All right. And let's say the 47 in here. Convert. All right. So how we send it? Right to left. That means right. we're gonna we're gonna send right. one, yeah. then one, then one, then zero, Sorry. zero, zero, one. Take a look in here. That's what we did. We sent the one and then the one and then the one, then the three zeros, then the one, then the zero. So in the exam, if I give you a question, this is a MAC address, how it will be sent. So it will be sent left to the right, and when you go to the byte itself, it's sent right to left. All right, so you need to convert this to bits, and then you have to write it this way. Clear? Yeah. Clear? Yes. All right. So somebody like, uh, let's take, an, uh, take uh, <coughs> Justin, are you there, Justin? Justin? All right, Justin is absent today. We'll make sure he's absent. Uh, Mansoor? Yeah, I'm here. All right, my, I forgot the question now. I forgot what was the question I was about to ask. All right. Um, all right, Mansoor, uh, I forgot the question. When I remember the question, I'll ask you. Let me, all right. All right, so... Uh, Oh, oh, I, I remember the question, Mansoor, sorry. So, uh, so the question, Mansoor, okay, why I have to worry about how is the data sent? So this is the MAC address, and this is how it's sent in the wire. Why I have to worry about this? Why I have to learn this? A question you could ask yourself, right? Yeah. Why? Because you need to talk with the, the computer, it's a, the language for the computer is zero one. Okay, I mean, yeah, but why you need to learn it? Why why you have to know it yourself? Um, it's important so that we could give a computer instructions and we could also transcribe. Okay, well, I think you know, as you engineer, when, when you have can... when you have a problem, you try to debug a problem. All right, when you have a problem. I mean, like when you drive a car, do you really need to know how the engine works? You don't. But if it breaks, you send it to the mechanic. The mechanic will, from the noise, from the sound, from how things, he will be able to understand. He should know how things work inside the engine that will be able to fix it. You are an engineer. You are not a tech. You are an engineer. So you'll, be do, you'll do consulting. You'll build software. You need how things to work. Let's say there's a cyber attack. You 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 receive the you receive the message, okay, and you reading the reading the data in bits. So you'd like to know it's a multicast, a broadcast, and all of that. So as engineer, as you are engineer, you really need to know how things work. All right, your mom and my grandmom don't need to know all of this stuff because they just drive on the computer. All right. But you are engineers in here, okay? So you'll be able to fix problems. You'll be able to 
do research and uh, you know maybe come with a new technology and, and different things okay so this is a very this is not a waste of time this is very important for you to understand the engineering behind it all right all right so uh, uh so let's a break would you like guys to have a break yeah let's have a break for uh, for 10 minutes i will come back <laughs> 